Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Dr. Abdul Rafi here again with a whole new chapter, Metal and Alloys. In this video, we will discuss about the introduction to our chapter and the crystal structure of the metal and alloys. Furthermore, in the introduction, we will cover the uses of metals in dentistry and how metal is shaped. And thirdly, we will discuss about the basic properties of the metals. For the start of the chapter, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe it for the updates of the new videos. So now we will start from the very basics, the introduction and in introduction we will cover the uses of metal and alloys in dentistry, the basic properties of metals and how metal is shaped or shaping of metals. So, the uses of metals and alloys. First of all, the steel alloys are used for making wires for orthodontics and for the construction of instruments. And gold alloys with chromium in it are used for crowns, inlays and denture bases. And thirdly, the dental amalgam is a widely used dental filling material. Now the properties of metals, except mercury that is a liquid metal, metals are hard, lustrous at ambient temperatures and they have crystalline structure and metals are opaque and they are good conductors of heat and electricity. Thirdly, the shaping of the metals and alloys. The shaping of metals and alloys is carried by three processes number one is casting in which molten metal is forced into the pre-formed mold from the wax pattern and then the cold working basically cold working is the mechanical shaping of the metals and alloys at uh, relatively low temperatures we will discuss about cold working later in this chapter in the details and thirdly the amalgamation some alloys are mixed with mercury to form a plastic mass and then this mass hardens by a chemical reaction followed by crystallization and this amalgamation is used in the dental amalgam filling materials now the crystal structure of metals before discussing about the crystal structure of metals i want you guys to know about two important terms that are the crystallization and the nuclei so what is crystallization basically when a molten metal or alloy is cooled it solidifies and the process of solidification of metal is known as crystallization and the second definition of nuclei is specific sites at which crystallization occurs or initiated is called nuclei. These both definitions are frequently asked in MCQs. You guys can copy it from my videos. Now we will discuss about the crystal structure of the metals point by point. Firstly, crystals grow as dendrites or spherulites. Spherulites are like uh, spheres which can be described as three-dimensional structure. Crystals possess three-dimensional structures. This is previously asked in a MCQ. Inaminating from central nucleus. Now as the crystals grow, Crystals growth continues until all the material has solidified and all the dendritic or spherical crystals are in contact to give a metal and crystal structure a compacted structure. I will tell later in the video diagrammatically that how crystals grow. Each crystal is known as grain. And the area between two crystals or two grains in contact is the grain boundary. Now I will tell you guys how crystals are formed diagrammatically. Now look at this diagram. There are three figures, figure A, figure B and figure C. In figure A, nuclei are represented 
n the crystal structure and in figure b the dendrites are emanating from the center of the nucleus and the crystallization continues until all the dendritic or spherulitic crystals came in contact and form a compacted structures that is shown in figure c crystals are said to have equiaxed grain structure this is also frequently asked in mcqs in exams the atoms with each grain are arranged in regular three dimensional lattice there are several possible arrangements of atoms in a crystal structure the first one is the cubic structure the second one is body centered cubic and the third is face centered cubics an arrangement of atoms in a crystal structure depends upon atomic radius and charge distributions on atoms uh, i will tell you guys uh, how these structures look diagrammatically now look at this diagram in figure a cubic structure is shown in figure b face centered cubic structure is shown and in figure c body centered cubic structure is shown in the crystal structure of the metals occasionally defects occurs and these defects leads to dislocations which affects on the ductility of metal now look at this chart high stresses produces dislocations in a metal structure and the plane along which dislocations moves is called slip plane and the stress required to initiate a dislocation is known as yield stress grain boundaries form a natural barrier to movement of dislocations that is the greater the grain boundaries the lesser the dislocations and the harder will be the structure of the metal so as the concentration of grain boundary increases and as i told earlier grain boundaries are the area between two grains in contact as the concentration of grain boundaries increases the grain size decreases fine grain structure is more harder and they require more yield stress to produce permanent deformations in comparison with coarser grain which produces less hard material and it has less it requires less yield stress to produce permanent deformation comparatively with the fine grain structure so what we conclude from this is that grain size can control mechanical properties of metals and uh, to get a fine grain structure we have to quench a metal so now what is quenching quenching is the process of rapid cooling of molten alloy following casting why we do quenching is to get uh, fine grain structure the finer the grain structure the harder the metal now look at this diagram in this diagram two figures are shown figure a and figure b in figure a rapid cooling is shown and in figure b the slow cooling is shown in figure a as a consequence of rapid cooling more grain boundaries are formed uh, with a fine grain structure in figure b in which slow cooling is occur has been occurred uh, the grain boundaries are less in concentration and the grain structure is coarser so basically in a figure a quenching is shown and the structure which is shown in figure a will be more hard and it will require more yield stress to produce permanent dislocations